Hello, welcome to Mix Training. This is Better Mix, and today I'm gonna show you how to treat read body objects just like particles. Alright, so this is what I did, just as an example, you can see I have shattered Roberto, made it into a thousand pieces or well, a bunch of pieces, and then I'm just simulating those pieces. This is nothing extraordinary, you can do this with uh, a few ways, but the, the way that we're doing it is pretty fast, and uh, we're gonna treat uh, these rigid body objects just like particles. The way we used to do this in, in the old, old days is we just simulated the particles, and then we were trying to just then copy geometry to the particles, but that's complex and it's not exact and it, it has a bunch of problems like interpenetration of pieces, etc. Uh, this way you are not getting any of those issues and you're getting all the benefits of uh, rigid body objects. So here's the scene. You can see if I uh, just play a little bit of this and we get closer to this, these objects are actually interacting with each other, colliding with each other, and uh, the way that you are supposed to do this and the way that you expect this to be happening. So we're gonna see how to do this, and as you can see, if I simulate this, this is actually very fast. This is, this is pretty simulated, but it's gonna start simulating here. See, it's, it's just, keeps on simulating it's it's fast and i have a bunch of geometry so it's it's all right it it makes uh, really nice interactive simulations all right so let's start with the blank scene okay so i have this scene here with roberto it's already pre-fractured uh just a bunch of pieces of roberto here you can see just fracture him into a bunch of pieces uh, you should already uh, know how to do this. If you don't, well, you can get my files. Uh, when you support us on Patreon, I'll give you all my files and you can see whatever I did here. So when I say that RBDs are just like particles, is uh, the trick is using packed geometry. And uh, when you want to do this uh, guy into RBDs and you go to the rigid body shelf, there is this fractured object um, tool here. If you click on it, you will get this uh, dialog and it will ask you if you want to use packed objects or fractured object. You should almost never use fractured object unless you are doing something really, really, really precise. Uh, most of the time you're going to be using packed objects, so let's do that. So once you did it, just runs uh, that, it will give you um, a setup here and there's another auto dop network created and uh, a setup here inside Roberto. You can see here just creates a red sub for your textures, uh, creates the pack primitives here, and then imports the uh, whatever simulation is going to be here. If we already play this, it is going to fall to the floor and it's not colliding with the floor right now, but it, you can see it's already working here. So now if we go to the auto dop, what's happening here is Typical uh, setup here, we have uh, an RBD object here, packed object, a merge if you want to merge other objects, the, the rigid body solver, and this is all standard. Uh, what we're going to do here is just add a merge and uh, use uh, static uh, object to import the floor, so we can have collisions with the floor. Uh, let me just do that real quickly. Connect it there. And it should now be uh, able to collide with the floor. And you can see this is uh, pre fractured. Oh, it's not colliding. Let me just check because this is not colliding. Because if I zoom out, uh, you can see no, here doesn't, it's not here, it's in the bullet data. If I show the guide geometry, you can see the guide geometry is, is this because it's trying to create a convex hole. We're going to do a concave hole for this, which is now just the floor like that. Just, that's what we want. Now we should just collide with the uh, floor, which is not the important part here. This is all standard stuff. You can see Roberto, it's colliding there. Let me just go to the camera. You can see it. There we go. 
it's doing that. Uh, it's actually uh, doing something wrong because I fractured this guy twice. Uh, and the name attribute is conflicting there. So let me just fix that really quickly here. Uh, here in the uh, pack primitives, I want to create the name attribute as well. So it just recreates the name attribute because I used uh, two sets of Warnoy fracture uh, passes here to give it a little bit more detail. All right, so that doesn't matter anyway either. What we can do now, let's just don't use gravity right now. Just, just have that Roberto there doing nothing. All right, so he's doing nothing. So now what we're going to do it's uh, let me show uh, that so you can see Roberto. What we can do here is actually, you can see the rigid body solver has uh, a few inputs here. It's the pre-solve and the uh, post-solve. And as I was saying, uh, when when the uh, the fracture tool does its magic, it creates this node and it creates pack geometry. And the pack geometry means it's basically saying uh, each piece is going to be just like a point in space. So you can see if I delete geometry, you can see that's what's happening here. This is basically what uh, what's happening for each piece is creating the center of it. And then it stores all the ge the geometry data for the piece, and Houdini really knows how to deal with the collisions around this. But basically, uh, this thing is basically just points. And if you see it like this, uh, like pack geometry is basically points. Now you can see this as a point cloud, and and a point cloud can be handled like particles. So we can do that actually. So now that we know that. These guys forget that they have this shape, but it, it benefits us that they have it because they will collide with each other. Uh, we can actually put a pop force node and plug it to the rigid body solver. As, uh, as you can see, it's doing nothing without it, right? It's not no forces applying here, but now if we do this, we put that one, put some amplitude here like two. Now look at that. Now they are moving around, but they are also colliding with each other. It's not just like these things are not just moving away because of the force. They are, but they are also colliding with each other, respecting their space as they do. And particles don't do this. They don't respect each other. They are unrespectful particles. Uh, so yeah, we, you can see they are colliding with the floor. We don't. We have uh, no interpenetration with the floor or with the the uh, other particles and stuff like that. So now you can just this. If you didn't know this, it's just opened a whole new door for you. That if you know how to handle particles and you need to do this weird effect with uh, rigid bodies, now you can do it just like treating them like particles. And uh, you can manage them or massage them with the particle forces that you already know, if, if you already know them. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. So let's, you can see that looks pretty cool for effects. You can do whatever you want now with this. If you already uh, done stuff with particles, you now know exactly what to do. If you want to make these guys follow a path, uh, twirl around something or whatever you can do it now uh so let's do that actually let's do the um spin force is it pop spin yeah pop spin you see now we can spin the particles this is not what i wanted actually uh, no this is not the one i wanted yeah i wanted the axis for sorry axis force now the axis force uh, will uh, create like a sphere see here is a sphere let's put it up here where Roberto is you can uh, make it bigger and you can make stuff uh, orbit around it I mean make some suction space, uh, force so now you can see we're just making a tornado out of Roberto and uh, let me just make it higher. But now you can see this is pretty cool because if you are creating like an asteroid field or something like that, you can just 
animated with these tools and they won't um they won't ever interpenetrate because uh druid bodies is what we are doing here we are not you can see i'm keeping those guys together there applying some more suction force but uh they are not interpenetrating with each other they uh they are colliding with each other you can see they're touching uh, but they won't uh, they won't interpenetrate each other or any other colliders that you have which is pretty cool pretty pretty cool for doing stuff that it doesn't require us to have like a specific physics of just falling or something like that that's pretty damn cool if you ask me and since you are here i'm gonna assume that you asked me and i'm responding right now all right <laughs> so you can do whatever um whatever whatever other things you do with particles let's uh, apply some torque to the particles make them uh, make them spin as well in their own axis to give them uh make them a little bit more interesting you can see really quickly you can make any kind of uh, effect with this uh move the particles in in different directions uh that's really uh useful sometimes just move the particles around uh we can maybe not do the axis force and do something really different like you see roberto seems like it's been destroyed there and uh this is also really cool if you are doing something like uh putting something together you can simulate it like that and then play it backwards and then you can fake something being uh, put together this is something that is really used a lot to put something together like this one you can see uh, we have now an animation that can be used to put some object together from a bunch of pieces so there you go. Uh, the only uh, other thing I would uh, say here is that I always use the pre-solve input here or for the real body solver. Why? Well, because I want to move the uh, objects first uh, in with the uh, particle forces and then simulate the, the real bodies. That's how I think about this. Uh, I might be wrong, but this is always worked for me. So I always put it in the pre-solve. I'm pretty sure that if you put it in the post-solve, it will it would work as well. But maybe if there are some interpretations, it will solve in the next frame. Uh, so I always do it in the in the pre-solve. So that's it, guys. This is a really nice trick. You now have control over your read bodies and make them do what you want them to do. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. I will see you in the next one, and let's keep learning together. Cheers.